stay tuned because for the next 60 minutes, Motorsports Unlimited is on the air. Hi, I'm Jerry Bryant, and these are the lovely ladies of Motorsports. And all this hour, we're going to have 60 minutes of action-packed excitement. All kinds of exciting things will happen. And we got the famous Bill Wilt, and we got all kinds of other good stuff that's happening all this hour. Motorsports Unlimited, 60 minutes of nonstop action. So let's go to the studio right now, huh? Jerry! Hi everybody, I'm Carl King here at the studio headquarters of Motorsports Unlimited, Chicagoland's hottest television series. Welcome to part number 325, coming to you almost live. Today we're making a return visit to Lake Geneva Raceway. It's been more than six years since our last visit and the changes are stunning. The track itself was totally redesigned and rebuilt some three years ago and everywhere you look, there are new amenities, including some touches never seen before in short track racing. In effect, we're taking you to the newest pave oval in the Chicago area. We have much to show you in the next hour, so let's join Bill and the girls just over the border in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin, as they pay a visit to a brand new old friend. Is it good to be back or what? It sure is. How long has it been since we've been to Lake Geneva Raceway? I would say probably at least six years. I think it's something like six years and Kevin Dawson was one of our first victims many years ago. No, what, it what might, it, it, you know, that was show number eight. It might even be more than six years. It might even be more than six years. First of all, there have been so many changes out here, but welcome once again to Motorsports Unlimited, Kevin Dawson. It's good to see you. Uh, we were just reminiscing a little bit. You don't know it, but you were show number eight for Motorsports Unlimited more than six years ago. Uh, there have been so many changes, including you. I didn't recognize you. And the first thing you've got to tell our audience is, how in the heck did you lose what must be 100 pounds? Uh, stress. You do enough <laughs> ratios, and that'll do it for you. We built a new third mile track, and I think it took a toll physically as well as, as mentally to get it off the ground. But we finally got it together. We're pretty happy with it. Well, I'll tell you this, it's been, and let me step over on this side so I'm not blocking your camera shot. It has been some six years at least, maybe seven since I've been out here, and I raced at this track many, many times. I don't even recognize the, the, the track anymore. Well, we we started a program nine years ago when I bought the track, Bill, and I told you then when we did that eighth show or whatever it was back, oh, I would guess 84, 85, that, that we had long-term plans to pretty much rehab the facility and get it back up to its former glory, and that's what we'd like to think we're trying to do, still trying to do it. Well, well it's just, he not just rehabbed it. When I used to race at this track, it was a quarter mile, not banked, absolutely flat, paved oval. Now, in the same location, they have a, a full third banked paved oval, and the space that used to be between the pits and the back stretch is no longer there. Right. It's, we've just simply took the available space and we built what we thought was the best length for a weekly short track. We thought a third was what we wanted and when we got it all done we turned out to be 1,762 feet, measured 24 feet from the pole halfway through the groove. So we came within two feet of an exact third mile track. We were pretty fairly happy with that. Well it certainly looks beautiful and as I look around there have been a lot of other changes. You seem to be one of the very first guys, at least at the local short track level, to actually have what we're going to call a hospitality suite. We're going to, I don't want to get into this too deep now, we're going to look at it a little bit later. This is new for a local level short track. We're used to this, of course, at the Daytona Speedway and, and Indianapolis Motor Speedway, but we don't really see much of that at the local short tracks. Well, we thought it would be something a little different. We understand we're not Indianapolis, we're not Talladega, but, but not every company is Monroe Shock Absorber or Union 76 either. And, and on the other place. hand, those places aren't Lake Geneva Raceway. Absolutely. Uh, we can offer a, a market niche, we think, for smaller, more local companies to do pretty much the same thing that Monroe or Union 76 might be doing on a major corporate level at, at Talladega or Indianapolis. 
Okay, I think it's a great idea. And again, literally everything is here is different except for a couple of things that I'm real glad to see that you still run motocross races. Absolutely. We've expanded the motocross program. We now do an every Friday night motocross program under the lights. We built a dedicated motocross track and days gone by it used to kind of cross the oval and create some problems for the stock cars the next week. We now have a dedicated facility. It's sprinkled, it's lit, it's pretty much state-of-the-art as motocross goes. We run a weekly Friday night program. We run 18 motocross races this year. Sorry. Okay. okay, real quick now because again we want to get to look at the cars and some of the other stuff you got here. What kinds of divisions do you run here on a regular basis? Obviously you run late model pavement cars but you must run other things we run four divisions on a weekly basis, Bill. We run a late model, which is basically a 406 cubic inch high compression motor, fully fabricated out and out race car. We run a... That's, that's the good stuff, Pam, in case you're wondering. That's the good stuff. But go ahead. You've got other stuff, too. We run uh, what's now called the uh, Mid-American Stock Cars. We call them sportsman cars here, which is a... It's based off of the 180 inch GM metric chassis from 78 to 87, that chassis. We run a sport truck, which I think you'll you'll find some very particular interest in. Uh, you run that on a weekly basis? On a weekly basis. We, well, I uh, thought that was like a, a, a special off-road truck. Because, uh, Chuck, if you can, pan over here to the left. I see we've got one of these little trucks here. You run these on a weekly basis on the oval? On a weekly basis, we run a mini truck class uh, based basically on the SCCA, the former race truck series, and you'll find four former Saline trucks, two of the former Archer Brothers factory trucks, and two former... Nissan Spencer Low built factory trucks that race with us every week now. Okay, that I was not aware of that. Now that's am I counting right? Is that three you told us? That's three, and then we run a street stock, which is pretty much a true street stock division. Well, we are going to look forward to looking this night. It's been way too long since we've been out here. And I must tell the audience, too, by the way, I've often encouraged them to take advantage during the course of the year to make it at least once to all of the short tracks and local tracks around like Kankakee and LaSalle and all that, and not just to go there with the intent of getting there, but to enjoy the ride here. And I was reminded of that on the way out on Route 12. That's really a pretty drive around there. I mean, do you know what I'm talking There's a charm to it. Maybe you're used to it and you don't think about it. Unfortunately, you do become a little bit jaded to it. You see it all the time. We sit here for for instance, if you actually look at the facility here, there are parts of this facility that look more like a park than a racetrack. And after yeah, a while, matter, you matter of fact, hold, one much, second. Uh, hold on one second. Chuck, if you would, if you could pan to the left a little bit over here, we can see the, some of the buildings, and these buildings all look new. I don't know if they are or not. I don't remember them. Virtually all the buildings have been replaced or completely rehabbed on the, on the track side. And, uh, of course, when we talked the other day, we, we bought the restaurant back in now to try to make it a, a very complete facility. So we keep working at it. Okay, it's very pretty. This is going to be fun. It's been way too long. Uh, let's get into it now. You three, tell the audience. Don't go away, folks. We'll be right back. Bill mentioned the hospitality suite and indicated it was something new in local short track racing. Let's take a look. <laughs> Thomas, what are you doing up here? The racing is outside. I'm relaxing and going to watch the race from up here, Bill. This is a nice way to do it, isn't it? Oh, wonderful. Chris, wait a minute. Christine, you've been to races all your life. You've never really watched a race in this kind of a fashion, have you? Uh, no, I haven't. What do you think? Uh, personally? Yes. I like it out there with the noise and the dirt and the smells. Right, because I guess, you know, there's two ways of looking at this. You could say that... Oh man, out there there's the dirt and the noise and the smell. I like it in here where it's air conditioned or heated, whatever is needed. Or you could say, out there there's dirt and noise and right. smell. You know? right. So it's a matter of your perspective. Let me get over here with Allison. Uh, I know what Allison's opinion is going to be on something like this. You want to be outside with the dirt and the noise and the smell and get hit by dirt clumps. No, actually today I would like to stay up here with a bunch of pizzas. Yeah, nice air conditioned area. Oh, this is wonderful. Kimmy, what's your vote? I, I can get used to this really quick. This is really nice, and like I say, the reason we came up here is I wanted the audience to see this. This is something new for local level short tracks. This is the kind of thing when I went to the Indy 500 uh, with the True Value Hardware Suite, this is the kind of thing that they had there. This is actually very, very nice. Girls, come up and join me over this way. I want to show what else is over here. This is actually quite large. I don't know how many people this uh, thing holds, but it, it really holds quite a few. But I want you to know that we do have work for you guys over here. Uh, if you come on over here, I'm not even sure if Kim Donahue will know what this is. Let's see if she can tell us. Kim, just come on over here. Uh, do you have any idea what that thing might be over there? That thing right there, Bill? Yeah. 
looks like a microwave to me. Yeah, that's a microwave oven. And I know, Pam Thomas, I don't know if you're going to know this or not. Do you have any idea what that is over there? Dirty dishes? Wait a minute. Where? In the right sink? here. That's a sink. She knew it. She knew that we had a sink and everything. I over don't there. know what any of that is. I was going to say, Allison, we've got something over here. I know that you know what it is. If you look right over here, <laughs> what, what have we got here? A bar. <laughs> okay. We know what we've got there. Anyhow, come on back over here. I just wanted to take a quick peek up here. This is, uh, I don't know if this is the future of motorsport, of watching races uh, in this kind of an environment. Yes. It is kind of neat to have it both ways. If you want, you can come up here with your friends and have a little party while you're watching, or you can be down and the mud and the dirt and I the must dust admit, and I must admit, I never thought that I would like something like this, but I went, when nice. I went to the Indy 500, uh, you know, that's a long race sitting out there. I must admit, I kind of like going inside the thing and watching it on television and the air conditioning because it was really hot out there. And you can really see well from up here. When you're out there, you kind of are seeing them as they're passing by. Here, you're kind of getting a top view looking down. So it does have some benefits. Sure does. Crystal, what do you think, inside or outside? Uh, I I like being outside better, but you got a point. I mean, it's it's kind of nice to have the best of both worlds. This is really nice up here. Okay, and uh, I'm not really sure if uh, Cindy knows enough about racing yet to have an opinion of inside or outside. What do you think? Well, on a nice day like this, why not be outside, but with the pizzas? <laughs> but with the pizzas. <laughs> okay, all you guys together, tell the audience. We told you earlier there were changes everywhere, including two hospitality suites with totally different purposes. Let's look at the other one. Pam Thomas, this is all new to you. Do you have any idea what's going on over there outside on the racetrack? Looks like there's a bunch of cars going around and around. Well, this is a man over there with the flag, and I don't know what he's doing, but it looks like each flag goes for each different car. It's really confusing. Well, exactly, and that's what we want to do with our show. We don't want people to be confused. We want them to understand what's going on out there right now is the qualifying process. Each person gets a turn to see how quick of a lap that they can go, and that's recorded, and that's how they get set up in the races so that you have similar uh, performance cars. You get the idea? Yes. Right. So first they have to go and time all the cars. Uh, I want, Chuck, if you can, I want your camera, to, I want you to take your camera and go out there and I want the audience to see if you will look right down the middle of the racetrack, that used to be a drag strip many, many years ago and the track, when I, and I raced at Lake Geneva Raceway for many years, Chuck, if you can, go down towards where the drag strip goes through the, I guess you'd call it uh, turns one and two, and if you'll notice, if you see where the car is up there, that's the new track, the new banked oval. But if you tilt down a couple of degrees, you'll see where the piece of the old racetrack is that goes right across the drag strip. And naturally, being that you had a drag strip running right through the middle of the racetrack, uh, it had to be absolutely flat. So this is a totally different racetrack. That old piece of the racetrack that's still there. And Chuck, if you pan over to the left, you can see on the back stretch, what used to be the old back stretch is now, I guess, just a road there. And they've really taken all the space up going to the pits to the other side there uh, to make this a full third mile oh. bank track. It's amazing. It's a totally different racetrack. Was yes. the old track a small quarter? Yeah, the old track was a small like quarter. a lot smaller. Yeah, with, with, with absolutely flat turns. It was a very, very difficult track. Now, once again, what we, Christine, do you know where we're at here now? Do I know where we're at? Yeah, what room this is? No. Okay, that other room that we were in, as I understand it, the other room was for like large parties and corporations and things like that, or companies, small companies and everything, to have, you know, their employees and everything, a whole group. This one is also kind of a hospitality suite, but this is for individuals. People do this one seat at a time. So I think this is very cool. Again, this is air conditioned and uh, pretty nice. So, you know, you have your choice to be out there with the thunder and lightning, which is what I kind of like, but I don't know, Pam, you say you kind of like this. Oh, I love it. I like it both ways, I think, you know, up here watching it and then, you know, outside too. Yeah, it, it, each one has its own kind of charm. You're exactly right. Now, let me get over here. Uh, we've found Kevin Dawson again, and uh, Kevin, you are leaning on something that I think is a particularly interesting piece. I spotted it when we came in. What have we got here? Well, what we've got here, Bill, is the trophy from the very first feature race that was run on the original quarter mile track back in 1962. The race was won by a fellow by the name of Pedro Rail in a modified. At that time, the track ran modified. And two years ago, Pedro showed up, 
brought back the original trophy and asked us to keep it on display here at the track. And I was, I thought it was kind of a, a, a neat sidebar sort of thing. Oh, I think it's very cool that the fact that the first, somebody found the first trophy and was willing to bring it back. I think that's great. Yeah, the very first feature win. Okay, have I characterized this about right? The other room that we looked at is for big parties or, or companies and everything, and this one is for onesie twosie guys. Absolutely. Um, it, it's We call it a VIP seating area. Uh, people can buy a season ticket into this area. It's air conditioned. The sound is piped in right now. Of course, we have the qualifying times off, but uh, it's it's piped in, and it gives gives uh, the person that doesn't necessarily want to tolerate uh, everything that goes on closer to the track uh, an option. Um, nice night like tonight, not too much demand for it. Over the last couple of weeks when we first opened, when it was 42 degrees with a 30-mile-an-hour wind, seats up here got to be at a real premium. <laughs> <laughs> I can well imagine. And again, this is different. I am not aware of it. Maybe you can educate me. I am not aware of any other local-level short tracks that have this kind of a thing. I mean, I hope I, I'm, I'm encouraged by it. I would hope lots of them eventually do it. Are you aware of any others? I, um, I'm really I not. think more and more of them are doing. Rockford, I, I know, has done some. I think Jefferson is working on some. Kakana has a similar area, but basically just for the press. Um, I think you're going to see more and more of it as everyone wants to try to keep up with the Joneses. You know, everybody is out there in the marketplace com competing for race fans, and uh, this is one of the amenities you can offer to try to compete for those fans. No, I think it's great. I really do. But now, none of this means anything if we don't have race cars, right? So I, I think I think maybe it's time to take a look at some race cars out there. Allison, if you would. To the pits. Don't go away, folks. We'll be right back. As we were getting ready to move our equipment to the pits, Pam surprised us by indicating she really didn't know exactly what the pits actually were. Bill saw it as an opportunity to explain to her and our general public audience what racing people are talking about when they use the expression pits. Pam Thomas, I told you we were going to go to the pits. Where do you think the pits are? Down below? What? Down below from where we're at right now? Oh no, look here. Way over there. Chuck, if you can get your camera to pan over there, way on the other side of the track. We've got to go way over there. You're kidding me. Oh, I thought pits were like underground or something. You thought pits were underground? No, the pits is, are, pits is, wait, what, Christine, don't laugh. Okay. No laughing. The pits under the ground. No, oh, no, pits is a racing expression. That's the place where the cars are all worked on, where the people prepare them. You didn't know that, really? I knew that that's where the cars are worked on and stuff, but I thought, I thought the guys all work like underground somewhere. I didn't know it was out level and on flat ground, like across the street. Okay, well, you're going to learn something tonight then. Did you want to say something, Crystal? I thought she meant, like in some movies, you see, they're kind of like underneath in front. Right, no, 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 no. That's not what this is all about. Anyway, we are right now, and Chuck, if you can, take your camera and pan around here. I want to show the, all the folks that we've got here. Uh, we are really blocking up the works here, aren't we, Kimmy? I think so. Yes, we want to get rid of the folks, uh, get, get out of the folks' way, and I can barely hear anything, Allison. Did you hear anything I said? Not a word, but let's go to the pits. Okay, we got one other stop, I think, before that. Uh, girls, tell the camera. Don't go away, folks. We'll be right back. I think I'm going to be teased forever about not really knowing what pits are, but Bill always tells us to ask if we don't know. Now, we're going to make one more stop before we get to the pits. Now, Pam Thomas, what did you say just before we went on camera? What is this? I said, now this looks like a pit. No, this is not the pits yet. <laughs> we are not yet at the pits. This isn't it. Christine, tell her what this is. The motocross course. Right, we got a terrific motocross course out here. And when Kevin Dawson earlier was talking about a dedicated motocross course, what he means by that is that they used to run the motocross course a little bit in with the, uh, with the by the stock car track. This is completely in Chuck. If you can take and, and uh, get a shot of that, you got big jumps here. It's huge. Yes. Do they still do the off-road racing? 
You know, I got to remind me to ask him later. I believe they do. In fact, I think they've got an off-road race covered by ESPN. They've gotten big oh, time with really? this thing. So I think they've got one coming up Memorial Day. But remind me to ask him later because now it's on the tape and I've got to follow up on it. Okay. okay. Pete, if you would, come on down here. Guess what we found here, Kim Donahue? Pete. What did you find? <laughs> we found a fan of Motorsports Unlimited, and he was surprised to see us out here. First of all, uh, Pete, is it? Pete McCarthy. Pete McCarthy? Correct. Welcome to Motorsports Unlimited. I understand you watch our show frequently? I try to. I catch, what it, uh, I catch it out of uh, U.S. Cable in Waukegan, and we live in Libertyville. Okay, and like any good politician, the first thing he did is he grabbed me, he saw me out here at his uh, favorite track apparently, and says, Bill, I sponsor a car out here, you got to talk to Double Zero. Tell us about Double Zero. What's the scoop? Double Zero right now is being driven by Bob, Bar Bob Brownell. Uh, he was a track champ out here in the late 70s or 1980 in a hobby stock car. Then he won two track championships out here in the late model division and with a sportsman car also at Slinger in uh, near Milwaukee. Uh, he was Artco Rookie of the Year, I believe about four or five years ago. And uh, he raced Artco for the, about the last three or four years. Uh, trashed his car out here in one of the last races of the season, did about four flips off of turn three and that was the end of the car. So he's now driving a car that he has acquired from another racer out here. And tonight he's driving the uh, double zero car. And uh, right now he's uh, leading in points already this year back at Lake Geneva. Are we going to have anything for him to say? I certainly <laughs> hope so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I want to thank you for uh, taking the time to stop over and tell us, and we sure will catch up with him. Pam, you know where we're going to catch up with him. Don't run away, Pete. You know where we're going to touch, no. catch up with him, right? In the pit. In the pit, but this is not the pit. No. No. Yes, My reputation of being the dumb question and the answer person is getting better every day. <laughs> no, no, it was, listen, well, I want to real quick say something about that. There is no such thing as a dumb question. The reason we do Motorsports Unlimited is we want the public to understand our sport. That was perfect. I'm glad she said that. If the public doesn't know what pits are, we ought to explain it to them. That's what we're here for. And it was cute, too, but... How could Pam be anything but cute? As a matter of fact, why don't you two guys uh, tell the audience. Don't go away, folks. We'll be right back. In just a few minutes, Pam is going to find herself in the middle of the pits. Hi, I'm Patty Sardinas, interrupting things just long enough to let you meet the rest of the girls on today's show. Hi, I'm Chris Schutz. I'm Crystal Kuchan. I'm Kim Donahue. I'm Cindy Scolio. I'm Pam Thomas. And I'm Allison Damore. Thank you, girls. Now let's join Bill and the girls in the pits with late model point leader Bob Brownell. <laughs> Guess who we found? I don't know who. We come step out here. Take a look at the number on the car. Now, what was that fellow talking about, Pete? Double zero. Double zero. This is the guy. Okay. First of all, you are Bob Brownell. Where are you from, Bob? Crystal Lake, Illinois. Actually, we know all about you and your racing effort already because we just got done talking to a fellow named Pete, I believe it was, and he told us everything there was to know about Bob Brownell. So I don't know what's left except why don't you tell us a little bit about what you're doing here tonight? I don't know. Excuse me. <laughs> We're um. First of all, let me start by let me. First of all, let me let me start by asking. I understand qualifying is over, and are you fast qualifier? We're fast qualifier tonight. Uh, we've been knocking on it. We were fast qualifier. They opened tonight. We've been knocking on the door the last couple of weeks. Missed it by a, just a tick of the watch, and tonight we got it back again. Okay. Now I understand that you're the points leader out here as of right now. As of right now, yes, we are. Uh, we kind of came back here racing just to just to race. We weren't really racing to run for points or anything this year. Um, it's, we've just been running real well so far and just gotten up there. All right, give us an idea. Since you're a top guy here at Lake Geneva Raceway and we haven't been out here in over six years, tell us technically what do you have? What does it take to be the fastest guy out here? Chassis, engine, trans, rear end? Well, it's, it takes a good car. It's got a good engine under the hood here, uh, Precision Automotive. The car itself is an old car. It's probably one of the oldest cars out here running. Whose chassis? It's an uh, old uh, Greg Folk chassis. It was built in 1984. And okay, do you run a quick change? Yeah, it's got a quick change in it. And how about a trans? Burt transmission. Oh, you run the little two-speed? Yeah. Oh, like the dirt track guy. Now, you're the first pavement guy I've run into that runs that little Burt two-speed. Uh, probably 60, 70% of the cars out here are running Burt's. 
Okay, don't run away because we got a question down here. You see, we're waving your hand. When, when one of the girls on Motorsports Unlimited has a question, we stop everything. So let me get down here. And it always is Allison that has the question, but that's okay. Because I just want to know so much about everything. If a guy from, let's say, Raceway Park wanted, for example, to race here one night, because they're shorter tracks, do they have basically the same rules and regulations involving their car? Does each track have a specified set of different regulations they need? Come on over here so you can hear it. Girls, tighten it up over there. All right, Allison has a question here. It'll be too hard to explain to you from that distance. She is asking, because we've been to Raceway Park a few times in Grundy County Speedway and all that, and she is asking, since these are bank paved ovals and they're kind of similar tracks, could guys from those tracks come out here and have basically the same cars? Could you go and race at Raceway Park, for example, and be competitive, or is it totally different stuff? Uh, Raceway Park, the rules are similar. Um, there's some minor variations as far as tires and engines and stuff like that. Grundy, they run the super late model style, the Artco style cars. Um, their sportsman class is pretty close to these and there have been guys come up here from Grundy and race and some guys from down here have gone so down. You're, so you're saying it's possible? It's possible. You just get a couple different sets of tires, a couple yeah, of that stuff, you can go to any other different yeah. tracks? Yeah, the rules are a little different. The cars are quite similar, though, and I'm like I say, I'm surprised. Right. It looks exactly like the car I drove over there. So I was wondering, because they're a little bit bigger track here, smaller, what that would... Grundy's, Grundy's Premier Division is is a notch above what these cars are. The okay. Rules are different than what okay, and what are your restrictions here? Uh, you got to run a uh, conventional coil spring chassis. If you go to a coil over car, there's a big weight penalty on that. Ah. Um, we're on 8 inch tires instead of the 10 inch tires that they run down there at Grundy. Uh, the engines, there's actually more engine under this hood than what they run in the Grundy Super Late models. Okay, so they limit you more or less by tire. They don't give you enough tire, so there's no sense getting too crazy with engine. Correct. Okay, now I understand we've got... Miss? Miss, if we can get you to come over here for a second, because we've got somebody here that really wants to get in the act. Do you even know this person? Uh, she looks familiar. Okay, first of all, who are you? I'm Bob's wife, Mary. Okay, Mary, we've got to put you to work here for a second. Can we do it? Oh, sure. Okay, I want you to step forward here. Are you familiar with our show? No. Okay, well, this will be new for you. I want you to look at the camera and say... Don't go away, folks. We'll be right back. We have some footage of Bob in action shot later in the evening. Let's take a peek. there's more than enough room to race side by side and we'll have more later. Right now, we want you to meet some people racing the mini trucks. Okay, well when we were talking earlier, we found out that they're racing trucks over here on every Saturday night. And I think that is the coolest thing out of all the racetracks we've been to. I don't think we've ever seen a division where they have truck racing. First of all, could you tell us who you are? My name's Chuck Johnson from Rockford, Illinois. Okay, tell me about this. This is great. Truck racing. Yeah, trucks, you know, that's a big segment of the, uh, the vehicle manufacturers. And uh, every Saturday night right here at Lake Geneva, we race the trucks on the oval. That is, I, to me, that is really neat. Okay, first of all, can you tell us a little bit, of, tell us everything about the truck. What kind of engine, what, tell me all the tech stuff. Well, all the tech stuff. This is a stock type class. It's a showroom stock type class. These are all four-cylinder trucks. This one's a Ford Ranger. It's 2300cc fuel-injected engine, just kind of like the one you drive down the street. And uh, you do safety modifications and a few tricks here and there, and uh, basically stock trucks. So basically, you don't have very many restrictions on it. You just have to get your safety equipment and all that, and you can race your truck? Absolutely. If you had a truck, you could bring it out with uh, just roll bars, seat belts, and a few other safety items. That are Fire suit. Fire suits, yeah. Okay, I was checking you a little earlier about it, and this was kind of impressive. You were telling me how fast these go. Tell the audience. It's really interesting. Well, the fast guys are lapping almost 20 seconds flat. So uh, that, I think, uh, translates to about 60 mile an hour average for four cylinders. That is still wonderful. Bill, do you have anything else? I think I covered it pretty well. Well, I have no doubt that you covered it pretty well, but since we're not going to have Kevin Dawson back here again because he is also the announcer here and he's up there announcing right now, I want to find out if we covered ourselves and what I followed, what I said before about no, they, do, they do, they do, they do. 
they do do off-road racing here, at least occasionally, and they got a big deal coming up where ESPN is going to cover it. Do I have it halfway right? Yes, you do, Bill. Uh, May 29th and 30th is the annual Off-Road 100 uh, Memorial Day race here at the, at the racetrack. Uh, off-road cars, just like desert cars, only scaled down small versions, and uh, it runs out here, runs around the perimeter of the track, and uh, it's been going on for many years, and that's how I got my start. I'm new to this uh, this oval racing. I come from an off-road background. Right, that's the big story. Normally one thinks of these trucks, at least in my mind that's the big story out here, is normally one thinks of these trucks as being off-road racers. Of course, we see them in the Mickey Thompson series on television all the time and all that, and of course we interviewed you some years ago when you were involved in the off-road trucks, and all of a sudden I find that they do a weekly program program here with the mini trucks on the oval track and if I've got this halfways right you've made the change over to this stuff and this is your first night or this is my first night uh, I came here last year with a exhibition truck the truck didn't fit the class it was a little bit uh, too wild for the class it had a bigger motor in it and I got hooked with it because it was so much fun uh, I'm still doing some off-road racing but uh, this is very close to my home in Rockford and I come up here every Saturday night and go racing and have a real good time they stack them four wide in the corners. It's just real exciting. This is some of the best racing of the night is watching the trucks. Now, they're very popular with people. I know that, yes. I'll tell you, I am looking really forward to watching that tonight. No, it's it's very, it's Neat. big time popular with the fans. Now, we've got another fellow over here. I want to thank you for spending a little time with us. Please don't run away okay, until no. we finish this thing. It was good okay. to see you again. Good to see uh, you. Let me go over here because there are a ton of these small trucks here, and we are breaking with tradition by continuing our interview during the national anthem. I hope the audience will forgive us for a moment. First of all, you are? Chris Palera. And where are you from, Chris? Burlington, Wisconsin. Okay, I understand you also are brand new in mini truck oval track racing. Yeah, this is my very first night out here. What provoked you to do this? Because this looks like a serious truck. Yeah, well, I used to run street stocks out here, and then I got a, a phone call from the owner, and he wanted me to try it. And what do you think? Have you been out on the racetrack yet? Yeah, it's faster than it look. And how about comparison to the street stocks? They're harder to drive. They're very touchy. Okay, do you know where you've qualified, where you're going to be? Yeah, I'm pretty quick. I'm in a fast dash. Well, congratulations. It looks like this is going to be fun. I know these are popular with the spectators. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. thanks for spending a little bit of time. You know, I, guess wait, 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 question, yeah. I guess my question is answered then, huh? They What's do that? do off uh, the off-road racing? Yeah, they do. We just explained it over there. One more question quickly. Uh, what uh, Technically, what are you allowed to do with the trucks? What do we have here? Uh, you can set up the suspension to handle better. You know, you can do little tricks with the motor, but not too much. You're not allowed a tube chassis or anything like that? No, it's all factory pieces. All factory pieces with slightly breathed on motors? Right. Bill? Okay. Yes, Al. Chris? Um, are there different classes of the trucks? Different classes of the trucks or all one class? Uh, right here, we only have one class. All here, one class? Yeah, they're all pretty equal. Okay, well, best of luck tonight. Please don't run away. And girls, if you would, tell the uh, audience. Don't go away, folks. We'll be right back. The mini trucks are famous for close, action filled racing. Watch. were great fun to watch, but we're getting ahead of ourselves. Right now, Bill's still helping Pam understand the pits. Pam Thomas, do you know where you're at? I guess this is what you would call the pits, right? 
this is the pits. And as a matter of fact, Chuck, if you take and give us a nice big wide shot, take a look at the pits down here. The pits at a racetrack is any place where the competitors take and put all their stuff and lay out their equipment and work on their cars and all that. Sometimes it can be a grassy field. Sometimes it can be a nice paved area like this. It's anywhere where the competitors gather with their cars. And the, and the expression, I, it, it's too long a thing to explain right now, but it comes from years and years ago, the reason they call it the pits. Now, I want to show you something else, Pam. If you step out here a minute, and I want you to look over there, and Chuck, if you can show our audience the blackboard, except it's a green blackboard, what do you suppose is going on there? Looks like the scores of the cars. No, what they're doing over there is they've all had the qualifying now, and the people have been waiting for uh, for word from the uh, from the announcing booth up there as to who qualified where. And what they're doing is putting up the first heat, the second heat, the third heat, the semis, the trophy dashes, as well as the fast qualifiers that just went out there for the parade during the national anthem. That's where, if you notice, all these racers. The reason they're gathered around there right now is they're anxious to find out where they qualified, what race they're going to be in, who they follow out onto the racetrack, and where they are in their heat race. Do you get the idea? Oh yeah. Okay. I'll tell you what. Why don't you? Check the audience. Don't go away folks, we'll be right back. Hopefully we're helping everyone understand what goes on in the pits. Now let's look at a fine example of a Lake Geneva sportsman car. chicken on a beautiful night like this putting coats on it's cold oh, it's not cold at all first of all we found a beautiful example of this division of cars before we get to that your name is Mike Rice where are you from Mike Crystal Lake uh, what division of car is this this is a sportsman car okay tell us about it what does a sportsman car what does that mean a sportsman car is a stock body stock frame car other than you know, like your late models or an aftermarket or a fabricated car. Okay, so you're not allowed tube frames. Uh, what about quick change rear ends? No, no quick changes. No quick changes. How about transmissions? Are you allowed to run a little Bird 2 speed or anything? No, four speed only. Four speed only. What about what are you allowed to do to the motor? Uh, we're restricted to cast iron intakes, headers. We get to run a four barrel carburetor. Okay, give us an estimate about how much horsepower do you make in one of these motors for this division? Pay three, 350 horse. Okay, and how heavy are the cars? They're 3,100 pounds. And what kind of tires are you allowed to run? We run an F53 Hoosiers. Okay, so you're not allowed the big 12-inch slicks or anything? No, we're not. Okay, yourself personally, how long have you been racing? This is my fourth year. Uh, always in this division? No, I was two years in the street stock. Two years in the street stock, so this is your second year then in this division? Yes. Where are you in the points? And I know we just started. <laughs> I'm third in the points. Third in the points, very well. Now, how did you qualify tonight? Uh, we qualified sixth. Not bad, out of how many? Uh, we only got ten. Okay, what do you think? Do you have a shot at it tonight? Well, we're going to try. We're going to try. Yeah. And what do you want to accomplish eventually? If I could wave a magic wand and everything good happened to you in racing, it could happen to you, where do you end up? Uh, IndyCar seat, Earnhardt seat, you tell me. No, just a local track. You just enjoy racing locally. Right. Don't you have any big aspirations for well, We've got a question. On Motorsports Unlimited, one of our girls has a question. We stop everything. Yes, Allison? Um, my question is, do they do demolition derbies anymore anywhere? Oh, they do lots of demolitions, but I don't know if they do that at this track. She's asking demolition derbies at this racetrack. They do that? They run an enduro. That's sort of a demolition yeah, derby. Okay, I want to thank you for spending a little time with us. Please don't run away. Uh, he's got to get out and race, folks, and we're trying to get him before the light goes away, so we appreciate uh, his indulgence. Thank you very much, and good luck tonight. Girls, tell the audience. Don't go away, folks. We'll be right back. We have a taste of Mike Rice in action. Of course, that was later in the evening. Right now, we want you to become familiar with each of Lake Geneva's four divisions. Let's look at a street stock. Crystal, what kind of a race car do we find here now? I don't know. Okay, Cindy, go ahead and tell her what kind of car is this? Uh, a nice white one. A nice white one. Allison, what kind? Is this a roast stock? No. 
that's drag right no it's not a pro stock allison first of all this is a street stock street stock first of all you are phil paul's grove and where are you from phil crystal lake illinois uh tell us about this is as i understand it a street stock car that runs here on a regular weekly basis right okay. I'm sorry, go right ahead. What is it? Street Stock is a stock motor, stock suspension car. Uh, they watch it pretty close, but uh, it's supposed to be something you pull off the street, take a little weight out of, and have some fun with. So This looks like it's more serious than that. It is quite a bit more serious than that. So. Why do we always screw these things up? <laughs> I don't know. That's how we have fun, I guess. So it's supposed to be a, a budget class, and I, eh, for some guys it is. For some guys, they spend too much money. So I think you would agree that probably the guys that run the fastest in this class have serious race cars even though they do meet the rules right except for me I don't I don't you, spend you take it seriously money. okay I got it well let's find out about you personally uh, how long have you been doing this and like that this is my second year last year I ran for half a year and it was a lot of fun but uh, you know we learned a lot last year this year we're kind of putting it together we're running fourth in points now and it's uh, we're, we're enjoying ourselves this year so you're taking this seriously then yeah and uh, I think another thing that we should point out too is we are the only Ford running in this division so well you're exactly right you should point that out in a world of Chevrolets I think that is pretty That's important right. now let me ask you the important question is it also a Ford motor even though it's a Ford outside this is a Ford motor so we're we're running good for a Ford you're not kidding that's very unusual I congratulate you for a selection that isn't you know run-of-the-mill and the same thing that everybody else That's picks why we have so much fun so. <laughs> okay thanks for spending a little time with us I know these guys are busy and I appreciate the uh, the opportunity to find out a little about the street stock division and we're gonna be coming out here a couple times more in a season hopefully we'll catch up with you guys again and you'll be leading in the point standing what do you think yeah maybe next week I'll be leading tonight I'll move up at least another one so okay one quick question if all the good things happen to you in racing that you'd like to have happen where do you end up. Do you want Earnhardt's seat? Do you want uh, Nigel Mansell's seat? You tell me. I don't want to be hurt and I want to have a lot of fun. I don't I don't want to move any farther than this. So. Well, that's great. So you like competing at a local level? Yeah, it's, it's fun. Come out on a weekend, don't waste too much money, and you know, I get to enjoy my family and have vacations and everything. It's not too much of a commitment for me, so it's a lot of fun that way. Okay, great. Don't run away. We've got a question. Allison, I see you got another one. I was just going to say, these guys are just so easy going about it. They, none of, they just want to have fun. You know, if you forget that in racing, you've got an awful long season because for all the victories and the few rewards that there are, those represent seconds in something that takes years. Am I right? That's true. It is true. You better enjoy the process. That's right. Okay. Thanks for spending some time with me. Appreciate it. I want to keep these girls in the act down in this end of it here. Girls, tell the audience. Don't go away, folks. We'll be right back. The street stocks are crowd pleasers at every racetrack, and Lake Geneva is no exception. Watch. a beautiful example of a street stock car that was so nice he thought it was a sportsman. Alright, I am really, really impressed with the quality of cars out here. Before we get to the car though, you are? Leroy Potter. Where are you from Leroy? From Walworth, Wisconsin. Uh, beautiful cars. I understand that a sportsman car. Street stock. Okay, I almost can't believe it because this, I just talked to a fellow about street stocks and they're supposed to be kind of unmodified standard cars. I got news for you, this is anything but. <laughs> well. Come on, fess up. They let it go through and we're going to keep going as far as we can go. This looks like a dead serious race car. Tell us what you have here. It's basically a stock car with just a lot of ground effects and aerodynamic stuff on it, but there's not a full roll cage. A full roll cage, yeah. And, which doesn't know. look like it's bolted in, it looks like it's welded in, which ought to stiff in the chassis. Yep, welded in. And my guess is the suspension is anywhere near stock. No, I got racing springs all the way around and racing shocks. Okay, personally, how are you doing in the points? I just got into top 10. The first two weeks I had motor problems and then I blew the transmission, but the last two weeks I've had really good luck and I took fast time the last two weeks in a row except for tonight. Okay, and how long have you been doing this? Uh, I've been racing since I've been 16 years old, and I'm 28. All, always street stock? No, I raced modified on dirt at Wilmot Speedway for a couple years, and then okay. I've been here for about five years. Well, you're the perfect guy to ask then. Contrasted dirt pavement, what do you like? Dirt. You like the dirt? Yeah. Okay, why are you on pavement then? A <laughs> lot less money. Really? Yeah, it's a lot cheaper to run this okay. class. 
Okay, now we've got a person here that I have a feeling would like to be on camera. The person standing right over there next to our girl. Do you know who that is? It's my wife. Can we call her in? You sure can. Miss? Miss? Yes. I think she's scared to death. Yep. We understand this fellow knows you. Yes, he's my husband. And you are? His wife, Lissandra. What was your name? Lissandra. All right, can we put you to work for a second? Sure. Step right out here, right in front of the race car, right like that, and look at the camera and say, Don't go away, folks. Don't go away, folks. We'll be right back. Even though we were running out of light, Bill saw a beautifully prepared mini truck he wanted you to see. <laughs> We got a really brave guy here. You know why? Why? Because he's got a Ford, and you know, in motorsport, you're in a sea of Chevrolets. Does he have a Chevy engine in it, though? Yeah, we you gotta check. Know. You never know. We gotta check that out. First of all, you are. My name's Ed Dunn. Where are you from, Ed? Barrington, Illinois. Dunn, Dunn, the name. Race driver. Have you done things other than mini trucks? No, sir. Well, I mean, we've raced most of our life, or adult <laughs> life, uh, but just local. It sounds like a name I should know. Well, okay. A couple politicians, but. Uh, <laughs> Okay, tell us, what have we got here? Uh, this is a, a 1992 Ford Ranger. Okay, you got a Ford in a sea of Chevys, or in the pickups, is the Ford a dominant uh, vehicle? Well, right now we're running up against a Mitsubishi that's uh, uh, given us a, a, a time to, uh, or given us a hard time this year trying to catch it. Uh, so, uh, this is like Daytona 500, folks. <laughs> the, uh, no, it's a you know it's a good class. They got Ford, Chevys, Nissans, Dodge, Jeeps. Uh, they're and, all competitive. Yeah, yeah, they all, they all do quite well. Uh, what is the car got the truck got in it technically? What have we got here? Well, basically, there's all the safety equipment uh, uh, that goes along with it. The, the, the things that uh, the safety equipment from roll cages to fuel cells to uh, to different tires. Uh, the engines have been gone through. Uh, uh, from front to back, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a stock truck, but yet everything has been reworked on it. If you take it seriously, that's what happens in any kind of motorsport, including pure showroom stock SCCA racing. They come end up being half uh, hand built, pure stock vehicles. It doesn't make sense to the general public. One day we'll explain it. Uh, how are you doing personally in this division? Well, this is our fourth year at it up here. We've had a lot of luck the past few years, and, and uh, we hope it continues. Uh, we've been working real hard this year and trying to keep up. Uh, uh, right now, uh, uh, we got our hands full, I'll tell you. It's a good tight field, a good bunch of drivers, and, and uh, the class has finally developed and grown enough. They have uh, about 20 trucks out here, and uh, I, think, I think that the spectators are going to see a lot of good racing out of this division. Okay, well, thanks for spending a little time with us. I know that you're busy. Please don't run away. I want to make sure the other girls stay in the act. Girls, what do you think? Did I leave you in a really busy area down here? Yeah. Yeah, were no. you scared? I no. saw the look on your face. I was just amazed because I've never been, you know, any place like this before. Oh, is that right? Really? Well, not, no. It's Allison. It was so loud down here, we couldn't even read your lips. Okay, and now we've got a hand waving down at this end of the thing. Girls, we're really in the way here. We got to get out of this. Uh, this gentleman would like to mention a few sponsors, Bill. Uh, be wants to mention to some people. Go ahead. W without those people that stand behind us and support us, we wouldn't be here. Uh, we have Victor Ford on the side of it. They're from Wakanda, Illinois. Yeah, Victor Ford. By the way, every place we go, whether it's snowmobile racing, they're involved with everything. Yeah, he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a behind racing 100 percent. R. A. Adams Enterprise, Nelson Auto, both from McHenry. Uh, we have Quality Tire over in Spring Grove. We have uh, Fontana Geneva conversion vans right here in Lake Geneva. Uh, we have a Broken Oar Marine Bar and Grill down in Cary, Illinois. United Auto Body in Wakanda. Uh, without these guys, we wouldn't be here today. Sounds like you're doing pretty good on the sponsorship front. Anyhow, we've got to fly because we're for two minutes. We're out of time. Girls, tell the audience. Don't go away, folks. We'll be right there. I think Ed was being just a little modest about his achievements as he ended up winning the mini truck feature. Congratulations. Now, 
Bill spotted something else new since the time he raced at Lake Geneva, a computer scale room. Cindy, what do you think goes on in this room? Uh, weighing cars. That's exactly right, weighing cars. And uh, Crystal, guess what? This lovely young girl wanted me to grab one of these guys out here to explain what goes on here. You know there's no chance of that, right? Not on your life. Let her explain you it. You bet. First of all, you are? Kim Blink. And what do you do here, Kim? I'm the pit clerk for the raceway. And what does that mean? And I should tell our audience before you answer that that we've been bothering her all evening trying to pick out cars from each of the divisions so we could be accurate in what we present to you. So what exactly does that mean? I run the lineups, all the different divisions, get them to the ramp on time to race, take care of finishes, and this tech area right here. Okay, you have something to do with this then? As the tech inspectors select the cars, they want to be teched out. They're brought into here, and then they report the results of tech to me. And then we call the tower and let the finishes go through if everyone passed tech. Okay, and one of the important things on tech is the weight, if it meets minimum weight? In the late model division, it's crucial. Okay, how many times do you find guys light? Not very often. It's got to be painful, though. Yes, it is. Disqualifications hurt. You know what, Bill, though? With something like that, they pretty well know they're going to nail them if they come in late, so aren't they pretty consistent with it? You won't think that, but uh, you'd be surprised at the number of times lots of money is kept away from people for being too light. Right. Yeah, it really does happen. Now, I know you're busy, so we're going to let you go. Can I put you to work for one second? Sure. Just step forward just a touch here. Don't go away, folks. We'll be right back. Now that's one pretty pit clerk. We'll bet the guys don't argue with her. As soon as we finished learning about the scale, we heard there was going to be a big wheel contest, so we hurried trackside to enjoy the kids. One, two. I wonder who they ran that from. looks forward to the monthly big wheel contests but of course the feature attraction is always the late model main event let's take a look at the field of cars on the parade lap You probably noticed our friend Bob Brownell in the double zero car starting all the way in the back. Let's go back to the track for the start. and car number 9 jumped out to an early lead with a host of others in hot pursuit. Watch as Bobby Gears and car number 50 catches him and takes the lead. Bob Brown now in double zero was working his way through heavy traffic. <laughs> Meanwhile, back at the front, Tony Benz in car number 27 is challenging number 50, Bobby Gears, for the lead. room for two abreast racing, maybe even three wide. Let's watch as Bob Brownell in number double zero tries to find a way around some very fast traffic in the form of Mike Simon in number 48, Jay Maywald in number 14, and Wayne Dukas in number 66. 
Eventually broke free, but Tony Benz in number 27 was long gone and won the feature going away with Bob Brownell finishing second. Tony Benz taking a victory flag lap in the number 27 car. As we mentioned earlier, Ed Dunn in truck number 98 won the mini truck feature. Eddie Hoffman was the winner in Sportsman. Jim Judson took the street stack division. And, as you've just seen, Tony Benz took the late model win. Congratulations, everyone. There you have it, our first visit to Lake Geneva Raceway in more than six years. And it was a real treat. All the improvements and growth contribute to making it a first-class short track. There was much more to show you, but as always, we're out of time, with only enough left to acknowledge the fine work of our award-winning production team, including Chuck Itzenthaler. John Kuchan, Diane Itzenthaler, John Papke, and Mike Sabatino. Special thanks to JBTV's Jerry Bryant. Music for Motorsports Unlimited is created by Fireside Recording Studio at Westchester, Illinois, and by independent artists Roger Pauly and Jerry Herbert. Of course, we've got to thank our stars. They're the reason we're the hottest show on television. Kim Donahue, Pam Thomas, Petty Sardinas, Crystal Kuchin, Allison Damore, Cindy Scolio, Chris Schatz, and our host, Bill Wilt. And me, I'm Carl King, urging you to take advantage of our fine weather and get out and enjoy a motorsport event. See you next week. Thank you for watching. This program made possible in part by support from Spring Align of Joliet, located on Larkin Avenue and I-80 in Joliet, Illinois. This program made possible in part by support from Tony Izzo's New LaSalle Speedway, located on Route 6 near I-80 and Route 178 in LaSalle, Illinois. Motorsports Unlimited is produced by Bill Wilt, president of the Motorsport Advancement Crusade. This program made possible in part by support from Westbrook Auto Service, located on Franklin Avenue and Dora Street in Franklin Park. This program made possible in part by support from Service Spring, located on Lake Street, just east of Wolf Road in North Lake, Illinois. This program made possible in part by support from ABC Auto Parts, located on Ashland Avenue and 138th Street in Blue Island. This program made possible in part by support from Dependable Carburetor, located on 35th Street, just west of Ashland Avenue in Chicago. Motorsport Advancement Crusade is a nonprofit organization dedicated to the preservation and enhancement of motorsport. We are entirely funded by voluntary contributions. For more information, write Motorsport. Oh, you could write the whole thing, Motorsport Advancement Crusade, if you like, but mail gets to us just fine, addressed Motorsport, P.O. Box 66242, Chicago, Illinois. 60666 or just call area code 312-478-4224. We enjoy hearing from our audience and encourage you to call or write.
So that's it, another edition of Motorsports Unlimited and the lovely ladies of motorsports. And be with us next week because we'll have something real exciting. Bill Wilt's going to have the lovely ladies and just about anything can happen right here on Motorsports Unlimited. Every week at this time, we bring you the best in motorsports. So uh, be seeing you. Bye-bye. And uh, keep on rocking.